yeah, 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 na, 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 yeah. Certain fire flames, now I'm born again. Times really change, talk truth. We seen better days, use no safe again. What a damn shame, talk truth. I want that them are promo, so quick them selling out, them sold them cashing out. Yeah, well, this is Kemetic 9 representing for I Just Star and the Mindset. If you now move right, get your mind checked. Hello, wonderful people. Welcome to I Just Stars The Mindset. Today I want to take you on a journey, one that promises to transform lives across Africa. Our mission is simple yet profound, empowering communities, celebrating culture and nourishing lives. Over the next seven months, we'll be traveling to seven different countries, connecting with Rastafari elders, documenting their incredible wisdom and celebrating their rich cultural heritage. But our mission goes beyond just interviews and storytelling. In Ghana, where the streets echo with the laughter and resilience of homeless children, we extend our hand. Through our campaign, we aim to provide nourishment, education and hope to these young souls. Picture this. A child who once wandered the streets now has a place to learn and grow. That's the power of collective effort. Our vision is to create a ripple effect of positive change extending beyond Ghana to touch the lives of children all across Africa. Imagine communities uplifted, traditions preserved and compassion sown like seeds in fertile soil and this is where you come in. We invite you to join us in this mission. Together, we can uplift communities, preserve traditions and sow seeds of compassion. Let's be the change we wish to see in the world. If you resonate with our cause, we invite you to support us. Your contribution, whether big or small, will make a difference. Visit our GoFundMe page to donate and share our journey with your friends and followers on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok and Facebook. Every pound counts and together we can create lasting impact. Thank you for being part of I Just Stars The Mindset. Let's spread love, hope and positivity across Africa and beyond. Stay, Stay blessed. Mindset, blessed love, manners, and respect. One for greet the item in the divine name of His Imperial Majesty Emperor Eel Selassie the First, and also Empress Men in the First, Marcus I, Holy Emmanuel I, King Selassie I, Ja, Rastafari. One more day above ground, beautiful viewers and subscribers, as the item know. Life is our ultimate position, not no greater than that, no matter what Guan, Pantapa wa Guan. Today I've got a special guest on the platform. A very special guest, a very important guest, by the way. Um a bridging that I um have the honor of meeting, I think too strong too strong ago at um Fairfield House in Bath and I want to take the time out now to introduce Ras Benji to the Mindset Platform. Blessed love my brother. Yes sir, blessed love. It's a great honor to be here reasoning with the eye and speaking to the world. At large. Yes my yes, king. Sir, through, your, through your platform from the city of Bath you know. Yes, King. Yeah, man, give thanks. Yes, I. Yeah, man, it's an honor you know, and a pleasure to have the high here, my lad. Yes, right. It was, it was uh, great to see the eye at Fairfield House and uh, all, the food, all the content, you know, from that's come from the house since then. Yes, I. It's, it's great to pro proliferate the message of his Majesty's legacy at Fairfield House, so that's a good good works. Give thanks, give thanks, my brother. Give thanks, manners and honors for that. Yes, I and it also was a great, a great, um, great vibes coming up to Fairfield House for the first time. You know, what I mean, been in England for numbers of years now, but you know, um, there's a first for everything. So it was truly an honor for me, um, forwarding up to to fear feel house and to have that experience and you know to meet the eye officially 
and also other virgin and sistren that was in the space and the day. So, you know, give thanks for the hospitality, my lord. Yes, sir. Yes, Ross Benji. So, all right. Um, Talk to me about, you know, yourself as an individual. Um, You know, where did the eye born? You know, what it was like for the eye growing up? in the community that they I grew up in. Yes, I. So just a quick introduction. I'm Ras Benji. I'm the operations manager at Fairfield House, home of his Imperial Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie I. Uh, yeah, I was born in this country, in the UK. And um, my dad's from Trinidad. And Barbados as well, their family from Barbados. Okay. And my mum, my mum's from this country. Um, so, yeah. And then my parents moved, mum and stepdad moved to Cornwall when I was around 12. So that was my, I had a, a kind of different experience, you know, moving from up country to way out countryside. And, um it was interesting, you know, and I give thanks, deep thanks to the Almighty now for these experiences. But in those times, I experienced a lot of racism when I was younger, or, you know, every day uh, racialized, you know, talking and these different sorts of things, you know. This is, this is like early 2000s and late 90s, early 2000s. Wow. In, in that time. Um, you know, it's kind of behind out in the countryside. So um, that awoke my African consciousness and was asked, making me ask repeatedly, you know, who who am I, you know, and like, you know, mm-hmm. what makes what makes me me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've always been thankful, you know, that the other part of my family in the Caribbean and, um, you know, enough of them migrated to Canada as well, but my mum always kept the link, you know, so I always had like pictures and occasionally would go and see them. And so I had that bearing, but um, that experience, you know, it made me want to leave the countryside quick, you know, in that sort in that time, you know, see. Um, it wasn't, you know, I, I, people go to these places like Cornwall for holiday, you know, in the, in, in the UK, but that was a place that I wanted to leave. So, um, I, w- I went to school in Bristol for a short while and then into London. And I lived in London for, yeah, must, almost six, 16, 17 years. Um, okay. Until coming to Bath, you know. See? So, so why, why, why did I move from London? Well, they, they are, the actual um, reason is because I was asked to be a director at Fairfield House. And then um, I just said to my empress, you know, it's time to move to Bath. But obviously a lot happened along the way in, in between, you know, for that to manifest. Um, and and then for the move to Bath to manifest as well. Um, so now I'm here serving his majesty from his house. Um, but yeah, it's, it's quite a journey and in between those times, you know. Um, so I've been traveled traveled quite well you know and seen a lot and um yeah rastafari you know rastafari has been that shining light for me um the faith and his majesty you know since like my late teens that was like when rast i found rastafari and it caused this this healing you know within me and balance as well made me find a real balance um uh, in myself, you know, and to know His Majesty, it was everything. Um, so because of that gift that He gave me, then I'm due to give, you know, to Him, and that's that's what I try to do. Yes, I. So how how did the how did the the trad started for the idol? How, yeah, it started. It was that time, like seventeen eighty. And, um, you know, many of these experiences in London this time um, and, you know, just feeling a kind of way a bit lost in myself. And um, I was listening to Bob Marley one day and I heard war 
And then everything just, it was like an epiphany, you know? And I realized that, wow, Bob Marley is living his life or like his message is to, for another man's message, you know, for his majesty's message that he's, he's put in the world. Bob Marley has taken up that sword and now it's reached me and it has meaning, you know, it has real meaning. Um, so then from that, I just began, I was at university this time, but I was studying his majesty, you know, <laughs> my, um, my studies was like his, in his majesty um, and all the time, any extra time I'm, I'm studying his majesty, always asking the questions. And I wouldn't at that time say that I was Rastafari, but I was certainly on the journey. Um, and then after, after a number of years and finding Fairfield House as well, I, I sort of had this moment where I realised like, it's been uh, so much growth as a human being, you know, as a man that His Majesty has brought to me, you know, spiritually, in every kind of way, educationally, you know, in every kind of way. See it. And then, so when, instead of separating myself from Rastafari, which I think many people do in the early stages, you know, they say, oh, well, I'm not Rastafari for this reason or that reason, or you don't agree with everything, you know? Mm. And that was when you get to that moment where you just realize actually, I am Rastafari, you know, because to defend his majesty, to live for his majesty is a glorious thing. And I know that personally. So um, that that was that was that's me then. Um, and then I tried to Ethiopia in 2016. Um, Pause. Yeah, first time, you know, I was the first person, you know, like within my family, wider family. I'm the first one that's come to Africa, you know, wow. return to Africa. You wow, know? wow. Because because um my my dad is black Chinese. See. My, my grandfather's black and my grandmother's Chinese from Trinidad, yeah. And um there's all different sorts of things, um, attitudes, you know, within that wider family mm. and um perceptions to do with Africa, you know, people say, um, oh well we're Scottish or we're Chinese or you know, there'll be anything but African. So for me, and isolated as I was, and my experience to resonate with Africa, now it's like this cornerstone of my existence, you know? It's like a real, it's a, it's a deep thing. So going to Ethiopia the first time, that was, that was an overwhelming experience, you know? Oh, overwhelming. Like it was like I was there, but I wasn't there there was so much emotion being in his majesty's place going to his majesty where he went you know um it was very special um for sure the first first time uh, in ethiopia um but then the mystics is is that so that that was big in my journey and i touched shashamani lalabella all around addis you know majesty places um met, met some you know, very inspirational Rastafari in Shashamani, like very in inspirational individuals in Shashamani I met. Rastafari. You know, and some, some Rast, you know, they, there's they, nothing perfect, you know, in, in that, that sort of setting. Um, it, you know, they're working so hard and the perseverance is amazing. Mm. What they're actually, taken up you know like um yes there's so much works like just in a, from a ground level to build something almost reflecting is what his majesty did for ethiopia what rastafari is individually and doing. collectively but individually doing in in shashamani um and i, I respect that learned a lot um and then to go to lalabella as well the first time that was a mystic, mystic chod and um, very humbling, you know, um, to to walk those paths, you know. But uh, what 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 what's the people? What's the people like? Do um, 
what, what's their reaction towards this majesty? Because I'm sure you must have asked the local, you know, their perception or their views and, and, and the emperor. Uh, for sure. So many people that we met love his majesty. You know, very interested to meet Rastafari, very warm and friendly to, to Rastafari. Ethiopians generally, um, you know, very friendly hospitable you know if you're not trying to invade their country or something <laughs> um, so uh that yeah generally that was a good experience um for as as rastafari um trod in in ethiopia the first time young rastafari as well and then the mystic ties when i got back later that year so i i kept up that pace of studying the emperor his majesty you know and um any book that I could find about His Majesty, reading it, um, sharing with my brethren, mm. sharing where I can, different presentations and so forth of my research. Sometimes, you know, in, in a naive way, not everything, you know, is, is, is toted. I, I would change, you know, I would um, evolve different things and um, sharpen them up, you know, but always trying trying to put things out there about the emperor and spread spread the word about his majesty because i noted as well that within rastafari there's so many almost like occupations or identities you know and mm. you could be about the herbs you could be about the farming mm -hmm. you, know, you could be about the music but for me the real thing was his majesty because his majesty is like my teacher and that's how you know, gave me my faith and lifted me up. So um, then I had read this book and got very upset by this book called The Emperor, Downfall of an Autocrat by Rizyard Kapuczynski. I don't know if you've read that, Raths, or seen that book. I've heard of it. Yeah, so it's the most read book or the most printed book on Emperor Haile Selassie across the world, and it's most found in universities, you know, corporate bookshops, these sorts of things, yeah. And it was um, written by this man, Rizard Kapuczynski, um, who was also like a Polish spy. He's like a communist Polish spy. Mm. And um, when he claimed to be in Ethiopia, he wasn't in Ethiopia. And there was a book in 2012 um, that was released by an author called Artur Domolorski. And he had been a student of Kapuczynski, you know, like a, a protege of him um, or someone that was sent to, you know, uh, write, you know, almost like his life story, document his life. And um, when he found out that he had been lying and he started following his trail, so go to Ethiopia, he found out that Kapuczynski wasn't in Ethiopia in the time that he said he found numerous problems with the text that didn't translate into the Ethiopian tradition. See and, and also the context of the time under the very violent Dirk government. Um, and Prince Ermias had done, has done a speech, um, I think it's at the Library of Congress um, or somewhere similar, it's called Agent Poeta, it's on YouTube. And um, I used to watch this often and you know when, whenever this topic came up but then through the mystics i was on my way in london one day and i seen a poster in the tube station and it's in the west end there's going to be a play called the emperor in the london's west end and i knew that there was a play in 1989 this is also on youtube the emperor rizard kapczynski the bbc play and it's very demeaning of Empire Ali Selassie. And uh, it was protested by Rastafari, um, by Ethiopians in exile, um, Ethiopian monarchists, including Prince Hermias himself, was at the protest in London in the 80s. Soon. They shut down the play um, eventually. Uh, but it resurfaced in 2016, and it was going to be in London's West End for three weeks. And I, in my limited networks at that time, I tried to raise awareness. You know, I was on social media talking about it and so forth. But I didn't get much traction. And I felt like it was a mirror from the Almighty. You know, it was a moment to say that actually 
you're trying to make ones aware, but you are the one that is aware. Yeah. So, so I, I need to do something. So I've protested that play for three weeks each night that it was on in, in London's West End and tried to get to some matinee performances as well. Um, yes, that. And that got quite a lot of attention. Um, Ethiopian supporters, Rastafari supporters towards the end, joined by a few brethren and sister in for the last night of the protest as well. well they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, sound like a very famous activist, my lad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, within, within, our, within our communities, you know, here in the UK, Ethiopian Rastafari. You know, um, I would meet people, I'd go to events and then they would start saying, you were the protester, well done, and shaking my hand and so forth. But it was not about that, you know, it was about for his majesty and the reason that I was standing there. And that was a crucial moment for my personal journey because a lot of the things that were inside me came outside on that on those nights, you know, because it was like a warfare because I would be, you know, in sometimes heated discussions, sometimes, you know, um, very tough questions about the emperor. But I generally knew the answer or I knew where to look quickly or to pose a question that might change their perception or open up their perception um, of his majesty to actually make them question. Um, so that was, yeah, very crucial, fiery time. Mm. And uh, from that, that was that really um, changed things because it was early. It was about 2009, 2010 that I first went to Fairfield House. Um, early in my trod, um, many Rastafari involvement before then. And um, 2011, I first went inside. And after then, I asked if I could volunteer, and I had been helping out um, along the way at events on the social media, um, for doing presentations, um, with schools and so forth, um, doing the radio station, and lots of different involvement as a volunteer. And then that is what, um, with what came, and um, they asked me to be a director of Fairfield House. Wow. Um, which, yeah, so which was an amazing honor, you know, it was, it was so special. It is so special. It's the great. It's the great responsibility. But I'm not actually a director. Um, I'm a. I'm the operations manager nowadays. Um, but e equally, you know, this is a great honour um, to serve His Majesty from his home I and mean. to actually be, you know, be involved there. Yes, so, sir. Um, Powerful. Uh, um, along the way, you know, I have to mention that I was welcome. Fairfield House um, by Ras Bandeli Selassie. One, um, one, one moment, Farai. I pray thee. I pray thee. Yes, um, your, your, your mic, sometime the volume uh, go up and, and, and see, it's going see. down. So it's perfect like how you speak a while ago. It was, yes, sir. I tried to hold yeah, it steady. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yes, Farai. Yes. Continue. Yeah, so just to mention, a long way away, this is my journey. Um, I was welcomed to Fairfield House by Ras Bandeli Selassie. Uh, he's, he was our elder for the past 30 years at Fairfield House, the leader of the Rastafari community. And, um, uh, you know, any, anything that I had to take to him spiritually or about his majesty, you know, the wisdom um, to strengthen my trod and my works. Um, Ras Bandili was very supportive of I, and I've seen him do amazing leadership, you know, perform amazing leadership acts for the community at Fairfield House and um, obviously that's on both a, a younger level like uh, uh, looking to an elder but also um, as in a professional level um, once I was representing Fairfield House working with him uh, it was always a great pleasure and uh, what 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 is what was he like though as a as, as an individual you know as a RAS you know, was he someone who was very humorous? You know, what was his character like? Yes, for sure. Like very, his his countenance, you know, is very welcoming um, to all people and very approachable as a Rastafari, right? but a very serious elder as well, you know. And um, I compared because his answers always were in a mystic way, whereas you know, 
obviously spending a lot of my time in these academic circles and mm. different sorts of um, you know that scholarly level and his wisdom is on like a King Solomon a mystic level you know it takes a while to absorb and there's lessons there's lessons still now um, as I work walk around Fairford House I can hear Ras Bandeli's voice and things are coming to pass you know so um, it, there's that that was the level of Ras Bandeli and 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 he will be greatly missed. Yeah, he is. He is. But he also prepared us for collective responsibility as a community, as the Rastafari community at Fairfield House. So um, you know, it's a uh, it's a blessing to have been a witness because when the Spirit of the Almighty is with you, when you're chanting, when you're praising Rastafari, mm. and you've seen that then you've been given a pathway to be able to replicate that. So now it's our responsibility um, to replicate that and to keep it going. Yes, I. Powers, powers. Um, talk to me about your, your, your role, though. Your, your, your role as a, as, a, um, as, as a manager now at, at Fairfield. House. Talk to me about that that position. What? So what, we have what? to start about what Fairfield House is, you know, um, because obviously this is His Majesty's home in Britain, um, and the family lived there for seven years. The Ethiopian royal family, 1936 to 1943. His Majesty left in 1940. Empress Menin left in 1941. Um, then in 1958, the emperor gifted his home to the city of Bar, and that was for the good of the elderly. And this still continues to this day. This is the living legacy of Emperor Haile Selassie. Um, the elderly, it became a residential care home in the 1960s. Okay. And then it was a residential care home up to 1993. And then it was could no longer be used as a residential care home because there are new regulations in the country. And so it became a day centre for Bath's elderly. And then in moved a number of organisations for the elderly. And one of those organisations called Bath Ethnic Minority Senior Citizens Association, BEMSCA for short. And BEMSCA have been serving the elderly ethnic minorities of Bath. They're the, they're the elderly group that remains using Fairfield House. They serve the elderly ethnic minorities of Bath for the past 30 years. I think they're in their 31st year now. 30th or maybe 31st. Wow. And, um, and uh, I think it's 31st. 30th at Fairfield House, 31st they've been at there. As an, they've been existing as an organization. So, and so um, during this time, this is another important pillar of Fairfield House that I'm about to mention. There's a lady called Pauline Swaby Wallace, and she has been the manager of Bemska for 30 years. And she has welcomed in the Rastafari community to actually praise inside Fairfield House because the first use by the Rastafari community, the first time we have record of the Rastafari community at Fairford House is in 1972, when they knew that the emperor was in the country. He was he was in a night of the Garter parade at Windsor. See it. And, and Rastafari in this country thought that he might visit Bath. So they were waiting for the emperor during his stay in the garden of Fairford House. They weren't allowed to go inside because it was a residential care home but they were waiting for him in the garden of Fairford House in 1972. Did the emperor turn up? No, he, he didn't come to Bath um, during that time. Um, 1954 is his big visit to Bath. That's 70 years ago this year. So anyway, um, Pauline Swaby Wallace welcomed in the Rastafari community to use Fairford House inside to worship. She welcomed, she welcomed in the Ethiopian community. They've been using Fairford House for 30 years this year also. Um, they started off with the local Bristol Ethiopian community. There was Ethiopian church use of Fairford House when they didn't have a church space previously. 
Um, and now we have a much wider Ethiopian community, you know, people from London, uh, Manchester, Birmingham, Bath, Bristol, um, using Fairfield House. Mm. And so over those years, and in recent times, um, twice it's happened, Fairfield House was threatened with sale. Um, the council weren't respecting the gift of the emperor anymore. They saw it as a liability and um, they threatened it with sale seriously. And uh, community members rose up and that includes Ras Bandeli. That includes Ethiopian elders that we have in our community like Ezra, Tesege, Kifle, Deraji, Fisya Komli uh, and Pauline and then local people of Bath that were on the side of Fairfield House, they were speaking out, um, you know, very aggressively against the local council and doing what they could. And another person that deserves mention um, is Sister Waleti Medhin. And uh, she was in that early stages when Rastafari were outside the building. She was the first one to sort of connect with the local council, connect with the elderly care that was going on and for Rastafari to actually have a look inside the building for Rastafari to be able to contribute things so in the downstairs living room you saw a big photograph of Emperor Haile Selassie and that was uh, donated to Fairfield House um, is above the fireplace next to the pianola that was donated to Fairfield House uh, by the Rastafari Advisory Council which is uh, an organization that Sister Waleti Medhin was involved in um, in 1988. So this is a long-standing community involvement. This mm. is a heritage for the Rastafari and Ethiopian communities in the UK and for the people of Bar. And then in modern time, um, in 2019, we, had, we made a community interest company so that we could speak with the council properly. Mm. Um, and begin to safeguard the future of Fairfield House and to not go into this jeopardy state anymore. And um, we've achieved that. So our community interest company has representatives of all those communities. So the Rastafari community, the Ethiopian community and the people of Bar uh, are all on the board of Fairfield House. And they uh, have, uh, we've achieved having a lease um, we're off the building in partnership with the local authority, which is Bath and North East Somerset Council. That's who owns Fairfield House because the emperor gifted it mm. to them, okay. um, to the city of Bath. Um, so, but we have the lawful use of the building now and preserved all that community use of the building. So that is a sacred space for Rastafari. That is a place of heritage for the Ethiopians. That as a living legacy for the elderly people of Bath. And this is this is in safe hands now. You know we're working every day to preserve and protect this, and to build on it, and to celebrate who Emperor Haile Selassie is. So, so, so um, let me just interject. Time to rise. Time to open up your third eye. Full time, you start to realize that all this time they've been telling us one bag of lies telling us a God in the sky that for you and I he die. Jenko Jesus or me or mile. These things they taught us from we were a child. False indoctrinating the innocent minds. Mind control is the signs of the time. Android, cyborg, AI, all these things combined. All these things combined might sound like a rhyme. But the evidence reality is right before your eyes. And I know this guys. The age of Aquarius is the shifting of the time. Sun, moon, stars, the planet in the cosmos align. As the cosmos align, low vibration, frequency, decline. You strengthen your mind. Access to knowledge, information from the almighty creator divine. Creator divine. The time arise. I feel with time for rise. The time appointed. Because I am anointed. The time arise. I feel with time for rise. The time appointed. Because I am anointed. Smash that subscribe button. 
see you on the next video. I just thought the mindset.